Welcome to Layback with Betfair. Joined by the A-Team, we're back. Hello, we're up on the Gold Coast for Layback with Betfair. It's Magic Millions time, it's all happening. We've got the local John Walter in the house. John, I welcome you in. How are you, mate? Uh, no, I'm going very well, considering this is always the, the, the week of madness, but um, we're grinding through it and we're getting towards the... The serious part now, I guess, so much fun to add. Yeah. Week of uh, madness. You've been out on the golf course twice this week. Hasn't been that bad. That's pretty mad for me. <laughs> In the rain. Liam, how are you, mate? Yeah, well, uh, I just got up here this morning, so I'm finding my feet, looking forward to a big weekend. Um, you stole my thunder there. I was going to uh, let the listeners know that Tom has done nothing but play golf for the last week and a half. But here we are, we're looking forward to a good weekend of racing. I'll check my schedule, it's a great one. It never seems to be... Uh, yeah, it was clear. Yeah, yeah, see, it was clear. <laughs> it's yeah, clear, clear. clear for golf. Um, obviously, 11 races on the Gold Coast track. Um, what did you make of the track before we get to preview the races? We'll start at race two, but what did you make of the track last week, John? It looked up and in a little bit. It definitely did, and it certainly, considering yeah, the, 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 well, the, the constant rain we had last week leading in, it's, it's interesting that they've put up a sort of higher rating this week than what they had coming into last yeah. week. So, uh, yeah, a little bit wary of that just because probably the humidity and it's been a little bit different, the weather overall. But if we get something similar last week, it was more like a fast two, wasn't it? So you didn't want to be coming from back and wide and having to sustain a run ideally. So I, personally, I'd be setting it up pretty similar. Yeah. What do you just, and you, I'll ask you in a second, Leah, but what do you, John, what do you make of track stats? Is it? The same, like, do you read a lot more into it now or less into it? If a horse is too, Prince of Boom's two from two at the track, for example. At this track? Yeah, at, at well, Gold Coast. He, yeah, horses well, that, for courses, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it's a totally different. So I guess you'd be trying to line them up with more like, say, Doom and form, something like that, I reckon. Uh, the, the old track was probably a little bit similar in, you know, up and in was where you wanted to be, but this is definitely a very different surface. Looks like a, you know, like a pretty fast momentum sort of Kensington surface, the way that those leaders were getting away and then you know the horses that looked to be traveling coming five six off the fence sort of struggled to get there so yeah i'd be setting it up as sort of a, a new surface and something like doom going to be a, a probably a interesting so maybe read less into the horses that have performed well at the gold coast previously, previously yeah i, I think yeah. you have to yeah you agree well, i'm happy to defer to the local there but i've always had the opinion that um, you look for horses that perform here in the past i mean normally it lines up with the stables who are are really strong at setting their horses for the big events. That's a good point. There's a couple of standout horses in a lot of races that have probably a ratings edge or class edge on a lot of the, that's what happens in restricted races. But let's get to race two on the Gold Coast. Um, so Magic Mill is the debut of two-year-old Phillies, as Colts version race three. But I just want to ask you, John, um, have you got an opinion? Waterhouse uh, has two debutants here, both Phillies, both coming off winning trials. Have you had a look at the race? Yeah, I, I did, and I, I didn't think uh, the the other opposition was super strong. So Gay, certainly, you know, the way she's got a handle on her two-year-olds this year, that she seems to be pointing them in the right direction. I, I would be surprised if she hasn't held these two back for this race in particular. And and certainly the early favourite looked to me the one that was very sharp, just looks like a 900-metre horse or a 1,000-metre horse uh, and that, that's you know, obviously what you're going to want around here. Whereas the other one maybe looked like it would be the stronger of the two potentially, but if, if I, I would imagine that the, the, is it two down Lizzie is going to yeah. be pretty close to off and gone. And um, yeah, I, I thought deferring to the obvious here was what I kept sort of coming back to. And the, yeah, so the other, the other contenders sort of looked at pretty weak types. It's, it's weird because this race, I would have thought would come up pretty strong and it, and it Kind of hasn't I, I agree. I think a lot of trainers would have set their horses for this race considering the rich prize money and we've seen small two-year-old fields a lot up here, John, leading into that race. I thought there'd be a stronger, bigger field. Yeah, they're hiding a, there's some out the back waiting for this race and it doesn't Correct. seem to be, yeah. Correct. But um, I think Waterhouse has got holds the key here. Dominators are half to Hartnell, actually, so might be strong late, as you said. Any, any look at this race, any opinion? No, I've done the trials for two or three. My uh, Gold Coast experience comes in at race number four onwards. I'll well, let's get to race four. Here. Let's get to race four, mate. Um, Rothfire is one of the most fascinating horses on the day. It's the Magic Millions cutest open um, over 1,300 metres. Rothfire is a fascinating horse because he's in good form. What do we do with him, John? 
Yeah, I, I actually, to, to be honest, haven't spent the time I need to on this race, but it, it smells of, what was the horse they used to have buffering that, the, that they basically, I think, put this race on for? Yeah. He's just so well placed uh, because of the conditions of the race. But, you know, he wasn't overly impressive at, at Toowoomba last start and he was extremely well placed there too. So it's a, it's a race where I'd be going looking away from him personally, but I haven't spent the time on the race to, yeah. to find that uh, the, the horse I'd like to be targeting. It's huge speed in the race lamp, which is, adds a lot of um, interest because Rothfire has drawn outside all of them. Where does he get to from 15? Well, I, I don't think you can definitively say that. And I think for a $3.10, $3.20 favourite, that's always pretty scary. Um, you've got Situation Room, Steady Ready, Chinny Boom, As A Reach, Better Get Set, Show Mercy and Dr. Why Not, all drawn inside. All are going to want to sit in the first two to three pairs. Rothfire has, have, have to, all, has to either burn a lot of energy getting to the front or just has to play for luck and try and get that three wide running line, both of which aren't easy to do. So um, that's sort of a price, very happy to oppose. Um, has to be a really good lay there. I mean, if we see five, six dollars late, possibly could I chime in, but absolutely not at the price. I agree with you. Yeah. And I'd imagine you're, you're on the right track. I, I, I definitely wouldn't be backing it early if you had the, uh, the opposing opinion. I think you'll definitely see better than, than what's currently available. I'm laying him. I think he's, he's concerning six and nine kilos, six to nine kilos more than uh, the first of the field in weight. And he maps so awkwardly on a track that proved to be up and in. I don't want him wide fanning five or six wide. If he is three back, two, three wide, two pairs back, he's got to come four or five out in that harder ground as well with a big weight. So, um, yeah, I, I'm with... The extra 100 metres is, is probably going to prove pretty important towards the end as well. With that, that weight 61 too. kilos, that extra 100. I'm happy to be with Boom Talk here. Um, won four in a row, was mighty unlucky last start. Probably should have won, making it five in a row. Um, each way, big price. Uh, held up late last start. 1,300 metres the query for me, but maps well um, from barrier seven now after scratchings. I am happy to be with Boom Talk here at a price each way, and I'm laying Rothfire at the price. I agree, I think he'll drift a little bit and we can jump in late potentially, but um, against Rothfire. Let's move on. Have we had a look at race five? Are there of you any strong opinions? I haven't had a, a huge look. I thought the favourite was very short. It's um, obviously lightly raced and, and has the, like a profile of a horse on the up, but it hasn't been anywhere near this trip. Uh, I thought it was pretty well ridden last start that she took off it right at the, the right moment. It wasn't, it was a powering away. It looks like a pretty, one pace stop, it's definitely on the up, but it just looks very short away from it again. Like it's probably just opposing it uh, off the bat looks the best, the best option for me because you know, there, there's a lot of horses here that are very similar and it's, I think it's, you know, who's going to get the right run, and the tempo thing's going to be important, but the favourite itself needs like an incredible ride and needs to sort of probably improve significantly to justify the price it is currently. I hate these races, 2000, 2200. They're all the same horses. They just change result every second race. So, um, your opinion? Well, in that, in that exact same breath, these horses that mix and match their form, well, you don't really be taking $3 about these horses no. for similar to what we said about Rothfire. Um, I would have loved Skylab to have less um, kilograms on, on, on his back, but sadly he doesn't. He just doesn't run a bad race. He's had such a weird prep, went back to the mile last start, now comes back up to the 2200, but continues to put really good ratings on the board. So United was fantastic last start, um, and then gains Tim Clark this week, which is only going to help. Um, Paris Sound for the Sarah Ryan Yard is the one that I'm with at a price, I think $23. Got it marked around the $12 mark. Horse going well, stable flying. And as, um, as John said, just keen to oppose the favour at the price. Let's head to race six, Magic Millions, the syndicate race, 1,100 metres. Prince of Boom heads the market here. He's a standout on ratings. He's a fascinating horse because I don't know what to make of his two runs. He had issues first up, four wide, second up. I thought he was still entitled to do a bit more late. Um, he was okay there, but I'll start with you, Liam, because you've got an opinion in this race. I do. Um, Prince of Boom should be winning this race. Um, Cardiac arrhythmia two back, there's an excuse. And then last start, four wide the trip, and then also found to have lacerations to the mouth after the race. You've got a, a horse here at a weight for age scale that is simply better than the rest of them. And we're getting close to $4 to find out. Um, I'm very happy to, I, I'll be taking this sort of a bet every day of the week. Yes. And uh, race six is the one that I'm keen to uh, bet up on to begin. Race six, number one, Prince of Boom there for Liam. I think. I looked at the ratings, I think eight of his nine last ratings were good enough to win this race. Um, so he's, he's definitely got the ability. Um, I, I said I would have liked to have seen him a bit more. Um, before I get to my selection in the race, John? 
Yeah, well, I've got I've got two reasons to oppose uh, Prince of Boom. The main one being that I uh, had an argument with Tim Clark that I thought he should have been riding uh, Rupertar instead. And you know, like obviously it's a bit of a no-brainer going Prince of Boom, but. Yeah, it, it's always a bit of an extra incentive for me to be you know, right, which is very rare for me. So, you know, to get the, the double up. But I do think it, it represents a bit of value, Rupertar. I, I understand exactly where you come from, Liam. And, like, and it's one of those bets that sort of, it just, you definitely don't want to be losing on the race with a horse with such a class edge. And it's not as if he's like crazily short. So, you know, three to one. Um, certainly making him at least a chop out, but I thought Rupertar was set for the race. You're talking about trainers who love winning races here. Bjorn's like number one on the list. Look He'll be out, Gold yeah. Coast if Rupertar wins. Well, yeah, exactly, and that's that's what he's all about, you know. And, and especially sales time, he loves. He's up and about. So this horse looked like it trialed up really well. Then I didn't think it, you know it was there to win first up, but particularly like they. I'm not saying it wasn't trying, but uh, certainly looked like it just had a good clean out there and a nice soft draw here. It's got a, a turn of foot and can hold a spot. It's a Perfect little sort of each way, roughy for me, or not roughy, but a, a that was that um, that either or race that we yes. actually liked for Upatar as well. When the leaders just skipped away and never got a chance to work into the race, so you wouldn't be sacking the horse off that race. For so sure. I'm glad you mentioned Rupertar and I'm glad you've had a fight with Tim Clark tonight. <laughs> I'm I want to save on Prince of Boom. I agree with you. I don't want to lose. Um, I don't want him to, to go around and win with just those ratings without me. But Rupertar's my bet here. Um, each way, I love the run first up. Slowly away, as you said, really slow tempo there. Um, and trialled fantastically prior to that. So she, she's clearly come back well, in my opinion. She still ran home really well. She couldn't win from where she was with either or settling outside lead. I think they went 10 and a half lengths slower than Benchmark at 600 there. They just had no chance. So um, love the run. I just, I'm not even sure we've seen the best of her yet. She's a, a filly that, I think she won three of it her first four as a filly and had a big boom on her. And she's just gone a bit by the wayside, but I think she's back. Mm. Um, so hasn't won since. Hasn't won since. Her fourth start, I think it was. So The last trial before first up was probably the best it's trialled for me since, since it was early in its career. And I, I agree, it sort of was like the light switch came back on. So hoping that Bjorn had it like, just might have backed off it after that trial. First up run, ready to go on Saturday. Yeah, it'd be peaking on the day. So we're all kind of on the same page there, race six. Um, I'm very much in the Rupertar's corner. Race seven, the Magic Million Snippets, 1200 meter race. Um, set weights and penalties. Another interesting race where we've got a clear standout um, favourite and a, a rating special in King of Sparta. Looks um, a good thing, King of Sparta. Yeah, pretty happy to be with that runner. But I mean, we're $1.85, so you're not you know, genius for finding that horse. Um, but exactly as you say, if, you, if you're into your ratings at all, this horse just continually runs better than the rest of these. And, and they, if, if he runs to his best, which they're here to win, this is the beauty of Magic Millions Day, they're all here to win. Yep. And if he runs to his best, they're, they're just off him. So any, you know, J-Mac on board, barrier three, gets the perfect sit, sit run behind them. They're gonna be very hard to beat. Um, there's no, no one in this field that I'm keen to play, so it's one of those backing of Sparta or stay out for me. A couple of horses with a bit of upside and Tuno is one of those horses that did so much wrong early that I loved his horse, he just didn't put it together. But I'm with you, I think King of Sparta wins and I'm probably happy to take $1.80, $1.90 on bet there. Um, John, you got an opinion of the race? Yeah, the ninety chance to scare the life out of me, especially sort of back markers or midfielder back markers that draw inside. But yeah. you've, you've certainly got the right guy on board to navigate that. Yeah, I probably won't be playing in the race, mainly because the, I don't really want to oppose King of Sparta too much, but um, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's not, it's not my cup of tea, but certainly the right horse in the, and you said like we were talking about the stables that set horses for races, and he obviously, I think he won, if it wasn't this race, he definitely won on this day last year, and he certainly, uh, they look to peak him for this, this event, so he'll be ready to go. It continues to run well here. Uh, it's two from two at Gold Coast, I believe. So um, yeah, he'll be, he'll be here ready and hard to beat. Let's get to the feature. Uh, the two-year-old, $3 million two-year-old classic, 1,200 metres. Fascinating race. Storm Boy looking to make it a hat-trick, undefeated from two starts at the moment. We saw a bit of controversy at Wyong with Tyler Schiller. Um, stop riding. Schiller the thriller, I call him. He, he definitely stopped riding. Do, you'd agree with that? Yeah, I think it should have won. I, I've, got, I've actually got no question that if he had have ridden it off the bend, hit it with the whip at any stage, and, and he would have won, I, I think. But I, either way, um, it was questionable what, uh, what, what was done late there, for sure. And, she, and he came out and um, obviously won last week and on the quick backup, so he kind of franked that why on form and, and that performance. And uh, it brings Highness into the mix, obviously, who went straight past it there. Um, at Wyong, 
Liam, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the race? Uh, yeah, uh, Arabian Summer's the one that I'd, I'd love to be with. Uh, continues to sh show gradual improvement. And I just love those horses in these two-year-olds that features that just, they, they can really up their ratings from race to race to race. He because they haven't the found their ceiling. during a week or something. Did he? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Um, something but, something you know, silly. If you're keen to find this horse, I don't, <laughs> don't think that's going to turn you off. No. Um, obviously, Storm Boy's the testing material, I think, has put two extremely good ratings together. That Sunlight, not Sunlight. Sunlight. Even that, sunlight. that's a big call. Did you yeah, say I sunlight? He did say sunlight. I thought that was a stretch. Sunlight is still a stretch, but yeah. we'll, we'll, that's not like committable offence. Yeah, that's no, okay. No, no. Yeah, I had my not. lay for you no. or whatever you were talking about. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Uh, yes, look, Storm Boy, I think he's found his price now. I don't think he's going to get any shorter than that, or I think it'd be crazy to get shorter than the 230 available now, especially as we were saying earlier, that these horses, they can, they can just jump three to four lengths in one start when they're just young two-year-olds, and very hard to get a handle on those. Um, and so taking something as short as 230 is not the best uh, formula for this. Arabian Summer is the one I want to be with. Um, of course, where he is Storm Boy. Storm Boy. And, uh, and probably parkour to round out the top three for me in a race that not full of confidence. Speed looks interesting. There's enough speed here. I think Highness is the map horse from four. It's a lovely run in the race. And if it does play up and in, there's a question mark over Spywire from 12, parkour from 17. Even Stormboy may need a little bit of luck from 10. So um, really interesting race. John, do you have an opinion on the race? I've got a fairly strong opinion and it opposes yours. So this is always good, good, for, uh, good for content, right? I, I think all that, I think like it did, it, when you say it franks the form, I think it franks the wrong form for my, I think that all that spy wire highness forms pretty, pretty average. I think um, it just, like, obviously you've got to take an opinion one way or the other. And, and the same with, uh, uh, what's the Arabian summer. I'm just, I'm concerned all that form. And I actually, a fellow who looks at horses for me, he's like, he's, he basically said that, third, fourth back in the Arabian summer race wouldn't win non-tab. So uh, to me that like, you just become very wary, exactly. And sort of fourth run, first prep or fifth run now, I think for Arabian summer, I'm looking away from that. Physically, Storm Boy's just got a hundred yards on them. Like I, I know, like the, I've been told he's got, he's got a deeper chest, bigger chest than a Y50, you know, like, so for a two year old to have that sort of physique, he's the one who's gonna take a lot of benefit. Uh, first start, obviously, basically not gifted the race, but showed speed and, and put him away. Second start, did a few things wrong, hit the front early, raced away. He's super strong. He's the one they've definitely got to beat. And if you take the opinion I have and sort of look away from all the highness angles, I thought Erno's Cube was the one who should be second favourite. And he's around 20 to 1 or, or similar. I think there's been a bit of money for him. So, yeah, I sort of marked him a clear second pick and he's only got a 900 metre win at, at Newcastle under his belt as the only win, but I thought he, they've looked after him and, and targeted this race and he's the one who can stalk and find that sort of highness spot that you're looking for. I think he's the one that can be in a similar position. So favourite, short enough, I agree, but could be the only horse in the race that I could see being super dominant. Erno's cube, the uh, clear value and sort of each way play. One thing's for sure, John, Jason Collette will try and find the fence from seven. Well, and that's what you want. Like, uh, it's funny. He, he's, he's a guy, sometimes you get here on a horse because you're like, just please get it to the outside, Jason, and, and don't fall off. Don't he's he, he's not the one for that. <laughs> well, I often, you know, contemplate lots of things in life. Hopefully, oh. usually try and get away from that. But <laughs> yeah, it's, to do. Oh, it's just when I call him no left turn because yes, he, he just refuses. He, he doesn't. And, and when, you know, when it all goes well for Jason, he looks like the best jockey in the world. And and sometimes you're left with nothing but expletives. So, uh, yeah, but he's the right guy for the job on a sort of roughy in this sort of race. He'll, he'll give it its chance, touch wood. I like that opinion. That's a fair, you've got to take an opinion in the race. I don't have a strong opinion and I'm probably not going to bet in the race. Yeah. Um, I will bet, but yeah. small. Yeah. Um, no, me, it's a feature race. So, uh, very good opinions there. Let's get to race nine, three-year-old Guineas. Another race that I found very tricky indeed. Um, could make a case for plenty of these. Liam, you had a look. I have and came to the same conclusion as you. I found this race extremely difficult to find a bet in. Uh, the two that I'm keen to oppose are the two at the top. Um, Sofrado and Chrysler, I think they're being rated well ahead of, of the performances they put together. So they're the two, that form line is the one that I'm keen to oppose. Um, the one that I will be backing at odds is, uh, is VC, the uh, Mara Neustis runner. Um, it's great to see him back to his best first up. That was huge um, and, was, and uh, giving Giving uh, what him a huge chance there. Uh, I think we're getting $15 still in the market, which I think is a terrific price. For a horse that came back and, and 
almost matched the rating he ran on debut, which was um, which had everyone talking. So um, was that ginger and pink form last start, when obviously was back last round of turn and, and stormed home and looked really good. Um, finding that extra furlong on the Saturday, I think uh, I think he's a really good bet at an each way price. Um, just mentioned uh, Ma Eustace. Um, watch the betting in the two-year-old race because if the money comes through an O's cube on on the exchange, they rarely miss in these features. So. Um, they've got two fancies there, obviously Spywire and Ernest Cube. You'll be following the market, John? Yeah, no, I'd be surprised if it started double figures, to be fair. So I expect the money to come for it. There you go. Um, any opinion, Race 9? Yeah, I, I think it's a hard race, as you talked about. I thought the one horse that sort of stands out as uh, could be, not a moral, it's a hard word to use, but a horse that I wouldn't be surprised sort of gap them is, is Royal Tribute. It's just got that... Uh, Glad you said that. Yeah, the osmosis form line from last prep. And I know Tim was riding it, and I was always like... he. It, it, Early on when it won at Hawkesbury, it looked like a 1,000-metre squib potentially, ran that ridiculous yes, yeah. rating. And then we saw that like, he couldn't go any quicker against Osmosis, who was sitting outside him, and it didn't really make sense that like, the horse had sort of trained off. But he'd always do something through the line, and I was like, you've got to tell him to get this horse to 1,400. And even his trial prior to the first up run, I was sort of half opposing him at Gosford because I thought he trialled a little bit one-paced, which always scares me about Gay's horses that are naturally brilliant. But... I think he's just desperate for 1,400 and he sort of fought back and beat Infatuation there, who I think has got a good chance in this race. I think that form line's sort of underplayed. Yep. And if he bounces, and I know there's a lot of speed here, so there's a lot of ifs involved, but we're getting sort of 10 to 1. And if he led dictated, I could see him putting sort of 5 on him. Um, without, you know, you're sort of imagining a race in your mind, it's the only horse I could see doing that. And, you know, if 1,400's right up his alley and he sustains that, that speed, you know, at 10 to 1, I'm more than happy to have something on Royal Tribute. I, he was the one I, I went looking for. Synthetic hoof filler off, um, firm track. He, he maps really nicely here. And um, yeah, I just think he's a nice play. It's set weights. I know he meets um, three of the horses that through that Gosford race, half a kilo worse at the weights. But um, I think he's the one that just gets the gear changes, puts himself into the race. And I think he'll be there when the whips are cracking. So at double figures, he is. $11 or $12. Yeah, he I thought is. He was the bet in the race I thought he'd be a clear favourite after he won at Gosford, to be honest, especially like those Crace. Well, it did scream like a, a sort of clean out run for Crace or, and, but like Sofrato hasn't really been going that great. And he's prepped right up to win that race. Whereas Crace might have like a length up its sleeve, but even then I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, it's a bit smelly, the whole thing. It just, I, I just don't like, imagine what osmosis would do to those sorts of horses. So yeah, I, I'm happy to be with Royal Tribute at double figures. It smells a bit like the pool downstairs, Liam. Um, <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> uh, if you, that's, we'll talk about that later. Uh, race 10, the Magic Millions Cup. 1,400 metres, Tamerlane, it's far too easy, Lock Eagles, Arastro, Revolutionary Miss, all off wins, uh, another very tricky race. Um, I like Lock Eagles, a horse, and you you and I both liked it. I think you um, might have tipped it out in your service uh, or had it second favourite or something, Lock Eagle last start. So, yeah, Lock um, Eagle was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a good win, but I didn't get the quaddy. Um, <laughs> I had it in the quaddy, but I didn't get it. Liam, before John jumps in this race? Oh, geez, I could have... 15 goes at this and get it wrong. How many um, in the quaddy then? 15? Yeah, well, we might play a skinny <laughs> and a wide. Um, but the problem here is the three horses that I'd really love to find, they draw barrier 20, 19 and 18, and you just don't know where they're going to find. And those horses are far too easy. So Astro, Samana. So I'm left with a 20 to 1 horse in King of Hastings, who even himself is, is going to need luck getting away from the rail when they, uh, when they hit the straight out of Barry 1. But he's the one whose ratings have been keeping up to the mark and, and he's at least you know he's going to get a bit of cover in the run. Going to need a bit of luck late, but at 20 to 1, that's the one I want to find. We'll be going in all quads. Far too easy, probably the most brilliant of the horses here and revolutionary miss, the one who probably gets the best run in transit. There's too many probabilities for me to have any, any sort of confidence in this race, so it'll be shoulder arms, try and find a couple of odds on the exchange late. Wouldn't mind King of Hastings uh, winning because I own a close relation with Reese Goodwin, so there you go. How nice. do you want it ridden? I've got to talk oh, to him later about how to how to how oh, tactics you want me to tell him how to roll. Like, no one can tell Sheila the Thriller yeah. how to ride it, so I'll, I'll keep out. Um, your thoughts on this race? Perfect thought. Actually, is it perfect thoughts? I um, I do think he he sort of represents a value in the race. It's thirty or forty to one. It's that sort of race. It's just I I, it's, I think it's got winkers on. Probably should have a laptop in front of me like you guys, Willow. so I can remember all these things. Willow. Yeah, he's a big race, big price trainer yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, so we have visors, there you go. So 
I, I just think this horse at his absolute best is he's right up with these horses and we're getting a big price. Uh, he obviously needs to improve off what he's shown recently, but he's capable of it. And Willow is a big race rider, big race trainer. Uh, I, I do think Kinlock on, if it was a, you know, Ramwick, yep. it would be the horse to beat, but um, it's, not, it's not Kinlock, is it? Lock Kinlock? Eagle. Lock Eagle. Lock same, they're the same horse, yeah, basically, they are, aren't maybe they? Lock Eagle. And they look Kinlock. identical. Yeah, they do. <laughs> the colours, everything. Stalling so. down the outside, doing the same thing. Yeah, big Nash Kinlock coming down the outside. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, Kinlock. Lock Eagle was even better for me yeah. last night. So, yeah, I think he's the, the class runner, but going to need a hell of a lot of luck, and you're not getting the price we are about the perfect thought. I actually think he's, got, uh, he's going better than... You might give him. You said he's not going that well. No, um, on paper, that's right. He's paper. got to improve on paper. But yeah. I loved his trial. Black him off that trial. Yeah. I thought he was in for a really good campaign. I think he's really here to peak. I think this is a setup for him. So, um, Craig Willow, Willow rode two winners last week, two or three. Um, he rode the track really well. So, I love the push for Perfect Thought. Definitely having something on him. Uh, let's get to the last of eleven. Hopefully, the tracks held up by eleven races and the weather's held off too. A few scratchings already. Uh, Lady Laguna, Royal Merchant, come off wins. Uh, so does John Quira and Tub Thumper down the bottom. Um, Liam, I think you're keen to play in this race, are you? Yeah, I am. Um, fair amount of speed in this race, race which I really like. Um, Royal Merchant is what I think is the hole in the market. Really keen to bet around uh, her. And Lady Laguna is on top for me, but I think right around the right price. I think the, the value for mine is Miss Hellfire, um, the horse that I've backed every start this prep off the back of an amazing trial leading into that first up performance. First up was just run at a farcical tempo, had no chance back in the field, put together a, a really wide run, second up, and then finally had some luck last start and was too good for them. Um, last preparation, um, when she got out to 1300, was a career peak rating for her, so everything's going well there. We're getting 10 to one. Um, got a mark closer to the $6 mark. I think she's, she's the bet in the race. Willinga Beast was huge last start, running, running down the outside. Another du double figure hope that will be going in the quaddy. But uh, Lady Laguna and Miss Hellfire, the top two to battle it out for me. We'll have a good guide at the track by now. Um, anything to finish us? Yeah, not many thoughts here. I, I do agree Miss Hellfire is absolutely flying. Didn't, yeah, complete forgives both runs back. Finally found a race the other day and sort of probably exceeded expectations. There was a really strong win. So, yeah, if she has any sort of luck in the run, I'd expect her to run really well too, I, I agree there. That's it at Gold Coast. We'll touch on our best bets um, after, but there's a couple of races at Rose Hill we're going to touch on um, and around the grounds. I'll ask you, John, you've got a couple of minutes to think of a, a bet <laughs> elsewhere and prep you for the show. Uh, Liam, I want to start with race five. I don't know if you've had a look at the race, but it does look, um, I know, oh, you have had a look at the race. Um, it does look an interesting race because there's a bit of speed here and there's a couple of horses that I liked first up Either or was one of them, Kitty Chat's the other, but they'd map really tricky here, up to 1,200. Big concern for me, and I'm actually against either or here. They went, it's the same race we talked about, Rupertar, they went 10.5 or 11 lengths slower the benchmark, and now it looks a fast run 1,200 um, second up. A little concern for me. I know, I think um, either or's flying, but just to, uh, just the map, um, there's a couple of horses that'll kick up underneath and Kitty Chat likewise. Um, the map horse is the one you're with. Yeah, hit the nail on the head there, mate. Um, I love to know that you're a gun for hire. You can jump on, get the money, and then jump right That's off. Right. That's what we like to see. Mrs. Chrissy, absolutely the map horse here. You know, yeah, you've hit it on the head. Either or and Bubba's boy, you're going to try and push up outside and, and fight for that uh, that spot outside Mrs. Chrissy. And even winning versus has got speed, so. Yeah, and uh, but the problem is Mrs. Chrissy's got no problem at all. She's going to find that rail. You've got the 1,200 metre at Rose Hill, which is a really nice spot to be. Yep. And, uh, and comes off that magnificent win first up where um, she just looked as good as she's ever looked in her career. And I think a lot of green flags here, as we, as we mentioned there, and we're getting upwards of $4 now. I think it's a really nice bet. Um, and you just let those, those horses on the outside battle for that other spot because she'll be sitting there pretty and uh, she'll be really hard to beat. There you go. I'm against either or. I'm laying um, either or at the price there, just the map. Um, you had a look at the race? Yeah, I have. I think it's going to be absolute carnage. Like, look at the jockeys. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, you've got Louis Bazoud Knight or whatever he's is. You've got Louis <laughs> Houston Gaza. Uh, on, on, he, he'll be told from Gay, uh, you lead, and if you don't lead, lead by further. And <laughs> either or drawn inside it with, uh, with Zach, who can, you know, and then you've even got Jet on the inside. He never knows how fast he's going. Bubba's boy, yeah, it's going to be absolute carnage. Uh, I don't think Molly will get near him. It was given, yeah, I'll be. Tyler. 
Thriller. That was unbelievable. There he is again, Chiller the Thriller. Yeah. Diamond Deal, it's, it's trial was quite quiet, so he'd probably be at the back. I actually, it's pretty sick. I've gone down there, leave me some and not that easy of the two. I thought, I'm trying to find a run on horse <laughs> in the race and they're 50s and 100s yeah. and I was on not that easy last start. It was in reverse for about 400 metres coming to the bend at Canterbury and sort of finished off, so... Gate one is going to be last inside. I could dead set have a peanut on those two just because anything could happen up front here. And if they go absolutely crazy, last man standing, maybe leave me some and uh, not that easy poking up the fence. Miss, I agree with you, Mrs. Chrissy doesn't need to lead. She could just be there, right? Yep. Um, so she's the map for Options, good. yeah. Fascinating 100%. race. Um, yep. Race six, you're keen to play in, Liam? Yeah, probably the race I'm most keen to play in for the whole, whole day. Um, you got pretty steady speed with Kabosh and, and too much caviar going to the front. The one that I'm really keen to be with is Aristonis, who was well backed off the map last start. Clear forgive. If you can f forgive and forget that run, he should be clear favour. And we're getting $6 out there, I think $6.20 on the exchange. Um, has been back to the trial since, looked really nice, ran through the line, did everything you want a horse to do when they've failed um, prior to that. So. I think this horse is well above them, and the one that I want to be with, just in case Aristonis isn't there, uh, I think Angel of Light is a really nice price as well. Comes in with the best form, uh, is lightweight and well drawn. Um, and Louisville's a third pick, but I think he's um, what is it? I think he's way too short in the market to begin with. So uh, main bet Aristonis, and then Angel of Light, the backup. Nothing for me there, John. If you hate me and you want to chain me up in a basement and torture me, make me bet in this race. There you go. <laughs> um, solid push there for John. You'll be, you'll be busy. Uh, you're keen in the last couple at Rose Hill, race 9 and 10. Am I? Okay. You? You, uh, wanted to you told me you sure. wanted to preview them. Um, I've got bets in them, so we oh, might well, as well see play. Can. Um, we'll touch. Uh, um, <laughs> certainly we have to wrap up shortly, but Union Army in race 9, the second last. Yep. Going really well, this, this runner. Finally draws a nice gate, hard to beat. I like the horse, yep. Yeah, uh, Boston Rock's obviously strong, but I just don't think that it um, deserves to be $2.20. Yep. And in the last race, uh, race 10 at Rose Hill, we're going to go across the Rubicon. We're getting 10 to 1 about this horse. Nice draw, was way too far back last start, and I think gets a much better opportunity to run a good race here. And I'm going to throw to John because I'm certain that he opposes me in this race to finish off. I, I do kind of, I do, because uh, only because I like the favourite, which is it's, it's rare for me to be fair. But uh, I just love the way Joe Pride's going about his business at the moment. Uh, he, he's just incredible the way he's sort of timing gear changes, prepping his horses up. This horse, he, he removed the blinkers and, and threw earmuffs on it uh, when he took it over. And, it's taken forever to sort of wind up. I hate earmuffs with a passion. I think they're the worst piece of gear that you can put on a horse if you want to back it. And, uh, you know, like deeper into the prep, they sort of, horses don't need those earmuffs. So now that they come off gate one, it's a sort of kitchen sink. This is D-Day for Testador Salon, or whatever his name is. So, yeah, I think it'll run extremely well. I'm, I thought I did come back to sort of cross the Rubicon because it's a, a horse that needs that smother soft draw to do its best and, and circling the field, carting them up is certainly not its go. So a race where most of the horses are not at their best, in my opinion, or not placed well, I agree with you that it, it does look the value in the race clearly. And yeah, in race nine, an interesting one, um, you know, I just think these are the days where jockeys make such a significant dis uh, difference. Yep. You've got a lot of sort of provincial jockeys coming to town and, and McAvoy draw sense of timing. If it was Ramwick, you'd just be all in just about, uh, but you know, Rail True, it should be pretty nice and he should be absolutely peaking in, you know, I mean, both his runs backs have been great, so I agree with you there too. Yep, another that tried well and clearly going well, this prep in Union Army. Uh, that wraps up Rose Hill, I've just got one play at Flemington for me, um, the Sydney side of John, Miracle Spin over there, um, won fantastically, another horse, I keep talking about trials, but trialled fantastically prior to this campaign, uh, okay first up and Fantastic second up with that win. Um, ran very good sectionals. Just needs to go the Melbourne way and will be winning, I think, race nine. How far? Number nine, 16. Back, staying okay, so staying 16. in the mile. I, yeah, that, that was, was interesting. Query for me. Well, I thought it would be too sharp for it last start and it put away some, like, obviously Louisville, uh, who's going around quite yeah. short, had its chance uh, and it clearly outsprinted. It ran away from it. I was quite surprised by that. So maybe Maddie Smith's sort of keeping the horse a little Fresh. bit fresher or something and certainly Flemington's the track you want to see it go to of, of all the Melbourne tracks. It'll, it'll be hard to beat. It maps to be back but there does have enough speed in the race and it'll wind up and if fresh enough. Um, and it can sustain an 800 metre run like yep. it's as strong as an ox. Yep. Um, you were keen on it too? Yeah, well, I, well $17 into $8 for, for yourself first up. 
um, and then obviously ran just out of the place in four years. No, I imagine not. No. Uh, I've only been hearing about it ever since, so I can't <laughs> imagine so. Um, but yeah, I think the horse is flying. Well, do I want to take 210? Probably not, but um, I think the horse will probably win. Uh, let's get to the Lay Street Clam. I don't know if you've got the figures. Uh, if not, that's okay, but you've got horses you're against this Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I do. we've got a couple. Obviously, Rothfire. Uh, is one we're keen to oppose early yes. in the day. Um, am I gutsy enough to put the lay streak on the line there at BSP? No, I'm going to let you do that. Oh, um, at BSP, yeah, because it'll drift. Yeah, that's can exactly I, right. Can I put um, a price I'm willing to take there? But uh, as we discussed with um, those horses at the top in um, in the three-year-old, Safrado and Chrysler, Yep. I'm going to go... both, mate. Could lay them both, um, and probably will will do on the day. But for the lay streak, I'm just going to lay um, Lips Runner, Safrado, and uh, and I've got $198 of liability, and you got 182. So that's what we're dealing okay. with this week. Um, I'm against either or. Um, my two lays of the day are Rothfire and either or. I think they're too short at the moment. I, why not? Let's make Rothfire the. The lay for the lay streak. It'll probably win paying 15s, but... Um, <laughs> oh, wait, so Matty, you're, you're, you're still losing the same amount of money. Ah, the right. longer it, it blows and the further it wins by, the, the better you look. If, if it shortens up and, and bolts in, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, anything no, you're going to take on? Probably today? not. A lot I, of favourites? Yeah, exactly. I'm well, every favourite, pretty much. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the only one I'll be cheering for is, and it's always scary, the last race in Sydney to be, uh, to be <laughs> siding with the favourite. But... If we have a bit of luck with any roughies during the day, they're normally multied up into it, and that'll be my uh, play for the day. Good luck, gentlemen. Thanks for joining me, John. And Fun. Liam. Pleasure. Fun. Looking forward to we're Saturday. At, we're about to uh, kick up the Betfair function here at 19, and uh, look forward to that. Thanks for joining us on Layback with Betfair. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.